Hello, hello, it's Tash and Ro. Welcome to or welcome back to It's Saturday, your personal self-care pod where you can escape the work week and unwind with your two besties. No matter what day of the week it is, but for us, it's Saturday. <laughs> oh my gosh. Season three, baby. Oh yeah, Yay. season three, new year, 2024. New year. Oh my god, I've already messed that up so many times on my calendar and all the dates that I have to write. <laughs> it X'd out. Like, <laughs> gosh darn frig. it. I feel like that takes a few weeks and then you finally yeah. realize what year we're in. Yeah, 2024. 2024 I can't believe it. Oh. It's been a busy couple of weeks, you guys. We've had Christmas, we've had New Year's, we've had family, we've had events, and like we need to update you. Yes. Okay, who yeah. wants to you go first? Okay, we're starting with Christmas? Yes. Okay, long story short, Christmas was amazing. We I finished work Friday and then we left for the cottage in Tremblant literally like Saturday, less than 24 hours later. And it was so nice to just like chill and yes. like relax. Like we went skiing a bit. I skied a lot. I only skied like once or twice. Um, the weather wasn't that great. Like there was snow when we got there, but by the time we left, like there was no snow left. It was, it was like, a green Christmas. It was a green Christmas, but thankfully like it's cold enough on the mountain where they can make snow and they had the World Cup recently there. So they've been pumping snow. Like not every run is open by any means, but the skiing was actually really good. Okay. Um, and I think I went, yeah, I went one time. I forgot my goggles, which was kind of sad because I got these really nice goggles for black friday and i was so excited but then we were just like so busy i was like busy getting christmas together man like bringing everything like make i made all these lists of things to not forget and i forgot to add that to my list so I because matt was just chilling and you <laughs> like literally bring the entire christmas i brought christmas <laughs> at least i didn't forget anything like for Important. tracy or richard yeah. or for matt like everything was good um matt and i have this christmas tradition i don't know if i've brought it up before on the pod but i know like a lot of people watch christmas movies but we watch the christmas episodes of friends each year the best so we go through like each season and we go through all the christmas episodes and then we just pick our favorites and i know because P matthew perry like passed away recently i think we were watching like a lot more chandler related um episodes and it just like made us be like man like oh, Chandler's the best he's literally my favorite character in that show he's so so funny so it was chill like didn't set alarms like I went for a run did some light workouts ate everything inside you got a karaoke machine <gasps> Yo, we got a karaoke machine so cool who got okay. you that Tracy and Richard. Of course. Of course. Listen to the pod. Us. They know we love karaoke. They know we love to host parties. We actually busted it out like Christmas dinner night, like which was fun to like switch it up. Like, you know, usually afterwards we'll have like like dessert and like sit down, have a coffee or tea. But we busted out the karaoke machine and like everyone was just like singing along. There's two mics. We have to download this app and you actually have to like subscribe and like pay each month for this app thing. But we're like, whatever. We'll just like download it when we want to use it. And then like the months where we're not using it, we'll just like cancel, cancel it. it. Yeah. So it has like Pretty much every song that you could imagine is on it. And it, the mics are really good. The volume is really loud. So I'm excited to bust it out at one of our next little oh shindigs. Oh my God. Yeah. That's pretty an sweet. Oh my God. Matt got me the most awesome gift. I know you already know what it is. But guys, if you don't know, I am a huge Dolphins fan. Fins up. Fins up. up. We, love the, we love the Dolphins. So Matt got me this like vintage like Dolphins like t-shirt crop top and it's so sick and then he got a sweater so now whenever we're watching the dolphins game we can represent i love it he sent it to me i was like yes oh my god <laughs> alex earl is approving this i am obsessed with it i got mad so i kind of <laughs> i was a little naughty i told him we said we were only gonna do a 50 dollars limit for our christmas gifts this year because oh my god poor guy because <laughs> we're getting because <laughs> we're getting married in italy and like things are expensive and like whatever but I don't know. I just, I knew he really wanted the Ninja Creamy, like the ice cream maker. He's been like dropping like little hints here and there. Like this kid loves ice cream so much. Like if he could have ice cream every day, he would. So I'm like, why not get him the Ninja Creamy? And then we can like make ice cream. We can make like healthy protein ice cream. Like we know what's like going in. It's not just like all like sugary processed. Like we know what we're making. So we got the Ninja Ice Cream Maker, but we haven't used it yet. Okay, we used it this week. We need a full review. Literally for yesterday, next I was episode. like, "I'm like, you were so excited for this ice cream maker, and you haven't even opened it yet." <laughs> Where are you getting your ice cream, sir? Uh, yeah, you got a little something on your face. It looks like <laughs> ice cream. What is that? Where are you going, Dairy Queen? Um, but no, I'm excited to try that out. And yeah, it was just like a wholesome, quiet Christmas. Oh, like, I love that. it's just the four, well, I guess six of us if you count the pets, like Stark and uh, Kai. But 
Yeah, it was good. I love it. It was cool. very like um, rejuvenating and just like refreshing. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Oh, sorry. What about yours? Oh, good. Um, mine was hectic as fuck. <laughs> You're That's because like, you were hosting. So calm, and I'm like, my that was <laughs> insane. I felt like I was dying. Hosting, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> so Aww. Christmas Eve, we had so my so let me start from the beginning. My dad and brother were staying with me for Christmas holidays, so they arrived. They both arrived, and on the Friday before, like the 23rd, we went and got. Um, we went to my dad's old place and we got a bunch of stuff that he had been putting in storage, including a treadmill, which I'm yes. so happy about. Unreal. So I'll talk about that in a second. We also got a bunch of my like baby photos that honestly, guys, I have not seen baby photos of myself since my dad moved to Colorado. You which were six, so cute. Six years ago. Oh my gosh. And I so, don't think I'd ever seen a baby photo of you until you sent me that photo. Because I was, I was asking my dad, like, where are all my baby photos? Like my mom clearly doesn't have them. My dad's in Colorado. Like where are these photos? I was so terrified that like somehow yeah. with the move, they got lost. So we went into like his storage unit and like they were all there. Thank God. So now they're all at my house. I'm like, you're not touching these. <laughs> I'm going to keep them I've safe. I've earned these. <laughs> yes. I'm going to keep them safe. So that was fun to like go through all the photos. It was so funny though, because I know me and Farza went to the same um, grade one, grade two school before yes. we like transferred school, Century Public School. So we found <gasps> old like class pictures of ourselves no, didn't so i was like let's see if we're in the same class because i do remember like we were both went to century i found a few of my old friends one of which was jay off the rise who's like a huge pop star now he oh was like in my, my class God. he wasn't in my class was class which was so sad because i'm like that would have been good would have that been if you were in my class oh my gosh but he was like, I remember the, like Central Public School. Oh my God, that's so crazy. Blah, blah. We did find like one of the old photos of his parents and my parents Aww. dancing at like a Persian party, which was really cool. Oh my God. And you can see them and they're literally like beside each other. They were it, probably like in their 30s. It was literally in 2003 or four, like oh so long God. ago. Crazy, crazy. Like worlds collide. Like that's craziness. That's so funny. Um, so that was really cool. And then, and then the next day or that night, actually, we went to a Sens game, which unreal honestly i haven't been well no i went to one sense game this year but this but one it was your first day of like sober yes december yeah, what yeah, was it no, sober november sober november so this was like we were like ready to drink my yes. dad and brother had just gotten here so we we're like let's go george like was the one who organized it all it was so funny Aww. he was like want to go to the sense game i'm like can i bring my entire family <laughs> <laughs> do you have tickets for yeah. 10 people yeah and it ended up like i ended up seeing 20 plus people that i knew just oh at gosh, fan yeah. deck oh yeah i saw people that i knew from high school i saw like so many different groups of friends this guy that used to be my neighbor like just insane so numbers random. of people and this is just a reminder that if you are going to go to a sense game or any event for that matter dress like you are going to see people you hate because <laughs> you do not want to arrive at that event and then be like shit i look like shit yeah and these people hadn't seen me in like 20 years oh or whatever it is like, I de you probably looked amazing though. i looked Are you kidding me good but i'm like def definitely could have looked better but you know what i mean you see <laughs> definitely could have brushed my hair brushed my teeth <laughs> put on underwear like, <laughs> definitely could have like uh amped it up a bit but yeah this is just a reminder that if you are gonna go to a science game or like oh, any event in ottawa there's a lot of people that you're gonna run into that you're ottawa's gonna know. small it's true so small yeah but that oh, was so fun, fun. And then, yeah, hosted 12 people for Christmas Eve, which was insane. Didn't, wasn't it like 13 or 14? Didn't they add somebody So, no. It ended, so, it was supposed to be... Sorry, 14 people. It was 12 people initially, yes. and then it changed to 14. <gasps> His aunt and uncle ended up coming last minute. And... It was really fun. I will say during the day, I was pretty stressed, but I did delegate my dad, my brother, and Farza to like really help me out. Okay, good. To like you do can't do it all. Honestly, you can't do it all. And so I was giving them even just like little tasks where I'm like, they was won't it, be able to mess yeah, this up. Like set the table. Set the table. Like, or like chop this parsley or like yeah. put this and like put water in this or like just yes. random tasks. And so when the guests actually came, I was able to relax because everything was done. Okay. And it ended up being a really fun night. We pu pulled out the party light and like set up the wow. little dance floor. Oh my and we gosh. were doing some Persian dancing. So it was really fun. Wait, this was Christmas Eve yes. though, right? Christmas okay. Eve. Do you yeah. always do the big dinner on Christmas Eve? Yeah, Christmas okay. Eve. Okay. That's like in a lot of different cultures. Like I know Italians do that as yeah. well. Like, we just made it up. Like it's just been a tradition we've been doing like with his family, my family. And then Christmas Day, we usually just do my family. We'll do like, yeah. know, like a brunch or something, something like that. Something smaller. Yeah, something smaller. Okay. Question about when you're preparing your 
your uh, Christmas Eve dinner. Yeah. So like what Matt's mom will do is she'll like, and I find this so smart, like she'll like get a few things ready like a day or two before that she can. Like for example, at the mashed potatoes, she'll do like the day before. Okay. Like cutting up all the green beans and like making sure those are ready to go like on a yeah. pot, like on the stove. Like that's the day before too. So it's like everything is like almost kind of done except for the turkey. Yeah, the turkey you can't point. do. And this was the first time I'd ever actually made like a full-blown turkey on my own. I've always like help my dad here and there but this time I was like I'm gonna try my own recipe okay I like did it all myself he was just there but I really just did it myself because I just wanted to like try something different do you have to put a lot of stuff on a turkey I feel like it's pretty like I, I made more. it like com- like a compote butter where I put like a bunch of different herbs and spices Whoa. and then I stuffed the turkey with like um whole like orange slices and, and like lemon orange slices orange slices what? lemon an entire thing of uh, garlic that you cut. I like got this really, it was like kind of like a Mediterranean style turkey, but oh it was really God. good. Oh my God. I've never yeah. heard of that before. That's yeah. so cool. So then even the top had like a lot of spices. Cause I do find sometimes I'm eating turkey. I'm like, I need to add so much other like sides to it. Cause it just doesn't mm. taste good on its own. Okay. And yeah, this one yeah. tasted really like flavorful wow. on its own. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So was there like, any leftovers? This <laughs> <sounds> amazing. <laughs> it was good. It was good. But okay. This is a topic of discussion when you're eating your turkey dinner. You're, I feel like you're either a, like a huge proponent of cranberry sauce or you're not. Like you either love cranberry sauce or you're mm. kind of like, it's there. I think you're either like cranberry or gravy. Yes. Yeah. I'm okay. definitely gravy. I'm cranberry. I could literally not care less about cranberry. <sighs> like I know you're freaking out. You're like, I went to 17 grocery stores. <laughs> I couldn't find any cranberries anywhere. Like what the hell am I going to do? <laughs> and I'd be like, so fine. Oh like, my God. No. My dad was like, yeah, so we'll just like. No, not my dad. Fires is like, whatever, we'll just skip out on cranberry sauce. I'm like, um, like, are you stupid? It's like if you, we skipped out on the turkey, like it's just like you can't, it's like having pizza without the sauce. Like you mm. just, for me, I'm like, it just need that cranberry. Uh, that's how much I feel about gravy though. Gravy like I so don't good. think that turkey dinner would be complete without gravy. And like, oh, actually you're going to love this. So we yeah. got so much like leftovers sent home because Richard bought a 33 pound turkey. Okay. That's insane. <laughs> we had so much leftovers and I fed 14 people. Yeah. So I was like, we, we guys- had, we had 14 over as well, but like I, we literally got sent home with so much turkey and tracy made like turkey soup and then there's even like little weekender bags for stark like that we froze with turkey in it for like when we go up next time so So much turkey but anyway and then um she sent us back with a little bit of gravy but it wasn't gonna be enough for like all the turkey we had so i was like shoot i hope i have some gravy and what do i have in our pantry chalet sauce i was literally about to be like don't you like love chalet sauce it's so (laughs) good on turkey guys this is your side. Next time you make a turkey or next time you have turkey leftovers, oh my God. get some chalet sauce. Dude, that's, that hit. That hit so I feel good. like that would give me PTSD from my work time <laughs> at chalet and I won't be able to do it. Oh my God. It was so oh good. No, that's so fun. No, but Christmas was really good. I will say towards the end, I was like social, like socialized out. Like I was like, oh my God, I just need, because we also had then a dinner at Faraz's family's house on Boxing Day. And it was just like a lot of events. Yes, like back definitely. Back to back. A lot a of lot. dinners. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of people I was talking to you too, it's like sometimes people have to go to like four different places. So they'll do like grandparents and then like mom and dad on one side, mom and dad on the other side. But then what if the parents are divorced? So then they're going to like dad's on this side, mom's on that side. It's like, and oh the partner's my. parents and then your family. Yeah, like, it's, it's like, a lot of, it's, it's a lot a of lot. dinners. Yeah, definitely. And then it was the classic like limbo, like December 26 to like, new year's eve or i was like what day it is what day is it what time is it like i literally had no clothes in this weird limbo but it was like so nice and that was like i gave myself so much grace to just like just be like lazy and just yes. like chill out like i feel like the last couple of years i use that time a lot to like like plan like like oh my 2024 like make a vision board like do all this write this and that out and this year i like actually waited until like january 1st and 2nd i actually like reflected on like what i want to do this year i didn't like force it like those like four days i just waited until the new year and i was like okay what do i want to do and it's not i hate how like there's like a almost like not a stigma but it's like as soon as it hits january 1st like what have you done different and it's like yeah why can't it just be a gradual change it'd be like there's a whole year ahead there's 12 months we can make small yes. changes it doesn't need to be like january first, first day. you're doing five Guys. workouts like a week like let me tell you i did not work out january first no. i ate a popeye's chicken sandwich yeah. january first <laughs> big mac yeah big, <laughs> big mac salad but january 2nd yeah. i did i did get after it but january 1st guys like it's fine if you're hungover it's fine yes it's all good oh my gosh but and 
while we're on the topic of Christmas, I do want to do a shout out for the friends miss we had at Ria and Ugh. Eduardo's. Guys, they invited us over for a little friends miss event and they seriously popped off so much. Like they decorated, they had all these games, they had like gifts for us, like snacks galore. Like I, I didn't know there were going to be snacks and I like I ate before. And then I was like, man, there was so much there food. Was so much food. And she had all these really cute games set up and oh my the decorations were insane. And when you showed up to the door, oh. I love this little detail. There was like a little shot waiting and it said, drink, what did it say? Drink if you're on the naughty list. Drink if you're on the naughty list yeah and we all took that we all took a shot <laughs> and i love that little shot at the door i'm definitely I, stealing I that know. for my birthday that was so fun it's so fun oh my gosh that's yes you definitely did steal that for your birthday yes. and yeah she did a bunch of games she and guys the most like touching part was like she literally she's an artist if you don't know she's very very talented she drew all of the like couples a picture of them too and like their dog or cat and she had it printed she framed it she had it like in a little bow let's like, post a picture of oh it my oh gosh, my god yes. yes i literally I, I was like in tears i'm like that took probably so much time and effort and like thoughtfulness and the way she like added all of the pets into it like i couldn't even believe it she said that it took her like two hours or something per yeah drawing, that's insane. insane that's there was five of us that's insane that was one of the most thoughtful gifts it I've honestly received, was so. so beautiful and like we'll we'll cherish that forever it was so beautiful i have it like posted up like yeah. where everyone can see it i'm like yeah, this is it's mine's like literally right there <laughs> oh my god it looks so good <laughs> Yeah, oh I'm gonna have to figure like, out like a permanent spot for it. But right now, I'm like, this is where it's going. The details in the dogs are insane. Like you can tell that's Nova, and not just some random no. husky. That's that's be any literally other dog. Yeah. my dog. And same with yours. Like you can tell that's Stark. It's not just like a random Bernie. Yeah, you know, no, I'm obsessed. It was so good. It was such a fun night. Um, we were giggling, laughing, and it just like made me just remember like your friends are your family too and like that's really important it's like the yep. classic the, your friends are the family that you choose and i'm just really grateful for like our little friend group that we have i love it and if you are like i don't know not everyone has like busy christmases yeah. and like has this huge family i've definitely had times where like my dad was in colorado my brother didn't come home for christmas and it was literally like a really small christmas mm -hmm. and i think that's okay to have either like a huge christmas a small christmas oh, as yeah. long as you're like spending it with people that you love and if that's not even your family but your friends yes. like that's totally exactly like, that's honestly that's sometimes even good. better <laughs> <laughs> no awkward like family co combos. oh my gosh oh my god but then let's talk about our new year's eve because we Guys, love a theme we love a good theme and this was quite possibly one of the best themes ever it was yes. casino royale like uh james bond 007 new let that year's sink eve. in yes like what oh my god when i heard the same i was like yes let's go so we were all decked out everyone came like dressed to the nines like as if we were literally going to like a gala i know everyone popped off like yes. these beautiful like floor length dresses like boys were suited up like there were suspenders there were bow ties like we were like doing our hair like as if we were like back in like james bond like eras from like 30 years ago you know red lipstick shiny like pearls glitter i liked it more than and like the classic New Year's Eve, like spadangly, sparkly look. Yeah. In my opinion, yeah. I thought it was very classy. And yes. just like, even if you did do sparkles, I felt like it was like a classier sparkle. Like yeah. it wasn't just like, but a bedazzled yes. dress. Do you know exactly. what I mean? Like it was very classy. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone just looked so good. And guys, they literally hired like a black track dealer and a um, roulette table. Um, and I was like roulette dealer dealer like, I, don't I don't know, know roulette, like a setup roulette man <laughs> and everyone started out with five hundred dollars obviously it was like fake money and we all got chips and whoever had the most amount of money at the end of the night won a prize yes and I was like up maybe like 200 bucks the whole night like I was not winning anything I also only play roulette which I've realized is not how you were supposed to make your money you're <laughs> definitely supposed to go to uh, go play, play blackjack, blackjack. Tash didn't tell us that she's this amazing <laughs> blackjack dealer or blackjack player Carson literally was like apparently sitting beside you and you knew all these rules like you can split this you can do this you can do that and he was like I thought it was as easy as like 21 and he's like no there's all these rules that he didn't know about yeah so where did you learn how to play miss guys this is so random but like when I was growing up like my dad taught me how to play Texas Hold'em and Blackjack and like when we would like go and like hang out with like at, we had a cottage when I would grow up and like our neighbors I remember we would play with like pennies so we would have like a bunch of pennies and like that would be like what we would bet it's just like with pennies so i learned i know texas holder really well like i know blackjack really well that's so, so cool uh, 
I mean, I came out with like nine grand. I made, I turned five hundred dollars into nine grand. I was so close to winning. So I close. thought, okay, this is what happened. I literally, first of all, I had five grand at one point, and we was like, there was thirty minutes left of the night. Like cutoff was eleven p.m. And I'm like, guys, can someone go find out like how much money does Matt have upstairs? Like da da da. So I went upstairs, like, oh, like. Uh, I heard he has like eight grand and I'm like what I'm like okay I can't let Matt like beat me like can I tell you how he got that eight grand though I was watching what he had no strategy he would just kept putting all in on odd on roulette and this mother frigger (laughs) was winning every round and I was like there's no lucky boy syndrome and I'm like there's no way it's 50 50 like there's just no way and I'm like are you gonna put all in you have like four grand on odds and then he would win Got it. And then he kept like he kept putting all of his money on odds. That's so scary. A good thing it was funny money. Yeah. <laughs> but I was like, he's like, I wish we went to the real casino. <laughs> I was like, Honestly, mm-hmm. same. I was playing roulette for a bit, and I was like, this. I feel this is more luck than strategy, and maybe it's no, just because I was no strategy. Like maybe there's a tiny bit of strategy. I don't know. But I was like, fuck this. No. I'm gonna go play blackjack. Yeah. Anyway, so then I'm like, okay, well, I want to like beat him. So I kept playing, and then I thought I was ahead. Like I had like eight nine grand and then sneaky mike i didn't realize he had all these blue chips and i don't even know i thought it was cool having an orange chip because an orange was five hundred dollars this mother fricker had blue chips which were thousands and then i'm like wait like how much does he have over there and he's like i have like a 10 11 grand but there was like three minutes left and i'm like what the frick so i started betting like way more trying to catch up and i didn't make it up to oh, how much money he had it was so devastating dude he won a sick prize so the host steph and justin they actually are building this beautiful stunning cottage like in mont tremblant it's almost ready to go and it's going to be like a rental property as well and the prize that he won was a weekend stay at their cottage and two spa. passes to the scandinav spa which is like the equivalent to nordique and i've been there before and it's like really really nice it's just like a smaller nordique um but like similar vibes and it's it's amazing so honestly they just got engaged not that long ago like yes. matt already has a cottage in tromblon like i've been in the spa i'm like bro you guys deserve to win like i but let me know when you guys go so i can come up as well <laughs> exactly oh my god that was such a funny night and also it was so funny because like at one point i'm like where is tash like can't find her <laughs> anywhere oh this girl no. put in a shift in this basement like it was yeah and it, and it gave off like i don't know like <laughs> like molly's game Mo- yeah like like it, like it was an illegal game of i don't know some illegal shit going on downstairs and i like walk downstairs it's like kind of smoky yeah. there's only guys there on this table and then all there you see oh is this little God. girl like tash just like split and i'm like what is going on and how are you playing with these men like this yeah. is insane i honestly was down there guys and i'm joking for like two hours like <laughs> it was so fun all i'm gonna say is like i'm ready for vegas like yes. we're gonna win some money when we go to vegas this dude summer. i'm giving you all my money and i'm gonna be like please play like this is it's, insane this is a hidden talent i thought i knew all her hidden talent <laughs> this is just is spooks. it a red flag or a green flag that i'm really oh my good God, at so such a green flag <laughs> oh it's my gosh and also i just want to say to you guys they had like signature cocktails for us that they made in every room where there was a TV they had the James Bond movies playing on repeat they had an N64 upstairs which is absolutely insane that had the game GoldenEye 007 I don't know if you have ever played this game no oh my god it is such like a nostalgic classic one of the first games that came out you're literally James Bond and it's like a multiplayer game you just try and like shoot each other but it was just like so iconic for (sighs) like the 90s when it came out or the early 2000s and they had those like retro posters to all across the yes like all in they the were walls. So, cool. Yeah, so cool i'm like you should keep these posters up like this is a sick theme to just have in your basement yes but yeah guys it was it was a time we like had so much bubbly fun. we popped it at midnight we were dancing we we're playing beer pong like it was Great fun night. we met like new people too like that was the really fun part of it too is like there was a lot of our friends there, but there was a lot of people I hadn't really met before or I had met in passing, but I didn't know no. really well yet. Yes. And everyone that was there was just so fun. So and fun. So nice. Yeah. It was a really fun night. It so was... shout out to Steph and Jay Wong because you guys are amazing. That was, and the party was in Orleans. So that was just a plus for us because that's Dude, like so Orleans close to our house. is like where the parties are at. <laughs> like you're hosting these amazing parties, they're hosting these amazing parties. This might have to move soon. You might have to move to Orleans. Um, (laughs) Okay. And then speaking of like New Year's and stuff, Vox actually made this incredible seven minute video. They usually do this at the end of the year. They've done it like in the past, but it's just like a seven minute video of everything that happened in terms of like news, pop culture, media, everything that Mm -hmm. happened. 
um, in 2023. I highly recommend going to watch it because it's, first of all, I know they probably spend hours putting that together. Oh my gosh, going through all that footage. I guess so kind of, if you work there, you must like go into the year knowing you're going to make this. So hopefully they're like clipping and saving these things and not just at the end of the year being like, oh shit, like, what happened? let's go back. <laughs> but there, it's just cr- it crazy because you watch, uh, you watch it and I'm like, I was watching it and I was like, wait, like I forgot about this. I forgot about this. I exactly. forgot about this. Like there were so many events that, and it just shows you how quick news circulates. Like yeah. you see something in the news, you talk about it for maybe a week, maybe two weeks, and yeah. then it's on to the next. I feel like it just shows how like desensitized we are though to like so many things. Like for example, that like Ohio train that like crashed and all that like nuclear shit exploded and whatever. And I'm like, what happened to those people? What happened to those people? Wait, well, all we heard was that the that happened, that people were evacuating and that was it like radio silence yeah no it's it crazy. crazy and all the natural disasters and then what i did was i went back and i watched like from 2022 2021 and mm. one of the themes that was obviously the same in all the years in the past like five years in these videos is natural disasters are going up right. like wars there's been wars so are many wars. definitely going up and it's just it's just insane. Anyway, so I highly recommend just going to watch it because it's we'll post really it. Crazy. Yeah, we'll post yeah, it. Yeah, honestly, yeah, give it a little watch. Seven minutes. You're watching it and you're just like, holy, holy shit, shit, that happened, that happened. You're just like, damn. I hope that someone is making because obviously there's a lot. This is a lot of like sad and like traumatic things that have happened. But like, I want to see like the highlight reel of 2023. Like, like happy, things. like all the good things that happened that I can't think of right now. But like, yes. there must have been some stuff that happened. But I just feel like that news doesn't make it as much to the head lines obviously as like the natural disasters yes okay on that topic yeah. of events around the world i saw this post about events that happened in ottawa and i want to see if you remember some of these because okay. some of them i was like damn i totally forgot that that happened oh my god i'm really excited okay okay well the first one how like the Rideau canal didn't open this year for the first time in over 50 I years i actually remember that because we were talking about how they set up a, like a skating rink in our neighborhood park mm-hmm. last year but it never got open because there was no like ice and yeah. again they like kind of set up the outside but i'm like it's not gonna freeze <laughs> i'm wondering if it's not gonna open again this I don't year think it's because it's to. january and it hasn't been below like minus 15 there's like, no snow on the ground there's still. no snow so there's no ice it's like it's yeah. insane so that happened um when the wildfire smoke took over the air this summer and or even before the summer i remember end of the school year we couldn't go outside to play because there was so much smoke and then in the summer you'd go outside and it would be smoky as heck like i kind of completely forgot that happened i think i just pushed that like compartmentalized didn't same, happen same that was insane because that's never happened in my entire lifetime and i remember Ottawa. our eyes were like kind of watery and like dry yes. during that time as well yes it was oh my so gosh. smoky oh my that God. was crazy um i didn't even know this happened but apparently this year there was a man who was caught driving in Ottawa with, the, with a license that was suspended 37 years ago no, didn't know that. Isn't that crazy though? Like who's <laughs> driving around with this old ass license? <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, the Barhaven tornadoes. <gasps> Dude, I forgot about that. Right? I feel like almost every year there's a uh, tornado that affects Barhaven though. Oh my God. Yes. And then the explosion. That was yes, that, that was, was that. Orleans explosion is yes. the next one. Oh my God. Yeah, I remember that. That Isn't I remember that- because I literally got woken up like in the middle yes. of the night from it and I thought like, I thought there was an earthquake or something. And then I was like, am I tripping out? And then woke up to literally the news. And I'm pretty sure the person, someone's like been charged and is like going to jail now for that whole yeah, thing, like, right? It was yeah. like negligence. It was like, yeah. negligence. No, it was a person did it on purpose. Like on they, purpose. Yeah, oh like, my God. Crazy. When Ottawa said farewell to um, the Rito's McDonald's and oh, there was I this remember. huge march. Yes, that was this year though. That, I was, that was crazy. That was 2023. They closed down. I actually haven't, I've been to the Rito Mall, but I haven't like walked down that street to know like what's there now. Me either. If there's anything, but crazy times at wow. that freaking McDonald's. And then also when there was the extreme storm and there was all that flooding that happened like in Ottawa and also like into Montreal this summer. It was in July. Do you remember? Because we were out of town or something for that or something, right? I wasn't because Matt was leaving Ottawa to go to Montreal for a bachelor party. And oh. I was like, you're literally leaving one flood to head to another flood. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. I remember because um wasn't like pat's like vic and pat like their basement got like flooded or something pa- pat's, pat's parents, parents basement, basement got, got flooded, flooded. Okay, yes, yes I and like that. we're just lucky that we're on like the higher side of alta vista because literally three streets over was like completely flooded in our neighborhood oh, crazy 
Oh my yeah. god. So, so those are just some a couple key themes. Um, natural disasters. Natural disasters <laughs> and, and some psycho people. Some psycho. Yeah. <laughs> which is pretty crazy. Oh my God, that's nuts. Oh, and then also we were talking about New Year's Eve and it made me think that this is the second year in a row where there's no more fireworks now at Parliament for New Year's Eve. Did you know that? Okay, why? What, did they just stop? Like- so uh, the main reason that they're saying is because of all the construction going on like at Parliament. They just mm. don't want to risk it with the fireworks, but people also just think that we're just cheap and we don't want to like put fireworks hey, in the budget anymore because we do it for Canada Day. Like... It's so expensive. Fireworks are really expensive. It must be really expensive. Yeah. Okay, what do you prefer? I would rather have fireworks on Canada Day than fireworks on New Year's. Oh, for sure. Um, I feel like fireworks on New Year's is kind of overrated. It's too cold. I don't want to be outside freezing. Like, it's not worth it at all. Is that the last one? And then another one pops up and you're like, yeah. Okay. No, I would definitely prefer Canada Day. Yeah. 1000%. Especially if it's your own fireworks or like your neighbor just puts on fireworks. Like, remember like at your my place? neighbor did? That was sick. I hope they do that every we year. We just got like a free fireworks show. That was a full on show. It was like 30 minutes of fireworks. Yeah, insane. we got the noise complaint. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. It was literally 30 minutes. I was like, who is putting this on right now? Like, Man, that family pops that off so for Canada Day cool. every year. Oh my so God. So funny. That's so cool. Okay, let's jump into some Showtime because I know you've been like so oh hyped God. up about the Gypsy Rose documentary and I don't really know a lot about it. So, Kay. and I know it's popping off all over social media right now. Guys, Gypsy Rose Blanchard has me in a chokehold. This whole story, I didn't know anything about it. I'd seen on my TikTok people like talking about yes. it, but I was like, what is this? What is this story? So then on New Year's Day, when I was hungover, I was like, I'm going to watch this documentary. <laughs> And this documentary is kind of, the story is insane. So essentially Gypsy Rose was, had all these different health conditions. Like she had cancer, she had like muscular disease. She had like every disease that you could possibly think of. This girl had like oh MS, God. she had cerebral palsy, she had um, mental retardation, like, like all this stuff. Okay. She was in a wheelchair and then like years go by and someone murders her mother who was her <gasps> primary caretaker okay. okay and they're like what could and like gypsy's gone like she's not in her house they're looking how for old her. is gypsy at this point so here listen to this so we don't she didn't actually know how old she was because not only did her mom lie about her age she also lied about every single medical condition that she had so this girl could actually walk and she was in a wheelchair but her mom made her like lie and sit in a wheelchair and never really told her like the reasoning but she kind of probably put it together but she was essentially like a prisoner in her own home and she her mom kind of used her to get like donations (gasps) and checks from like different charitable organizations because she she would like shave her head and pretend like she was a cancer survivor the only reason she was able to pull all this off was because their home was impacted by hurricane katrina back in 2005 so their entire home was like uplifted and same with all the hospitals and stuff so their medical records were like wondering i'm like this is how did they get away with this so they she she had already done this kind of like scheme like this like way of getting money and essentially they got a home from like this charitable organization that was building homes for people who got impacted by hurricane katrina and because she was like had this daughter that was like had cancer and had like all had all these things they built them a home and she was able to like falsify a lot of medical records and stuff saying like her daughter had all these things and because they couldn't really confirm with those like doctors or with those hospitals because they were all gone. Oh my God. The do- a lot of doctors blatantly just like, like, like sure, sure. Like looked okay. at her medical history and just like believed her. Oh my God. Okay. There was a few doctors that actually flagged this as being like, this is not correct. And there's a medical term. I can't remember what it is now, but I will post about it where there's a condition where people make up Munchausen syndrome, isn't where it? Munchausen syndrome or something else where they make up like conditions for others oh. and as a way of kind of holding control over them and gaining like emotional, like support and them things through that person so it's almost a way of like trapping that person to become like a prisoner this is so effed and up. she didn't know any better because they her mom took her out of school when she was in grade two so imagine you've never been to school That's you've never socialized with anyone 
It's just like all she knows and that's like her normal. Exactly. And mm-hmm. her mom was giving her medications oh, through so a dangerous. feeding tube. Oh my God, and so a lot fuck? of the medications that she was giving her were causing the symptoms of the diseases that she said she had. And so that was also another reason why the doctors believed her because she was giving her all these medications that were causing her to have these symptoms. Oh my God. It's honestly, guys, go watch the documentary. It's called Mommy, Dead, and Dearest. They also made um, like a... Um, what is it like a live action or a reenactment of the story? It's called The Act on HBO. Okay. Um, I've only watched like a couple episodes of that. And I don't know if like how good that is, but the documentary is insane. And she ends up like killing her mom through this Ooh. guy that she meets online. How old? And Wait, you don't know how old she was when she did this. She was, I think, like 20 at that point. Oh, like, can, I'm sorry, but like, can you blame her for like even wanting to like do that when it's so like the guy ended up getting life in prison and she ended up only getting 10 years she, she was, got 10 years she was supposed to get death penalty because oh the state that she was in was like oh this is murder you're gonna get death penalty but the judge was able or like her lawyer was able to show evidence that she was like a prisoner in her own home and all this yeah. stuff and because like also she never went to school she didn't like know what was going on yeah. like her mental like capabilities are of like a 10 12 year old child you know what i mean well her mom literally ruined her entire life and where's dad dad didn't know any of this was going on because listen to this (laughs) guys just show up because guys just show up (laughs) so they got he got (laughs) um she was pregnant when she was 17 took her daughter and was like we don't need you left and then the dad would like check in once in a while and she was like he's she's really sick like blah 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 like all this stuff and he kind of honestly it was also his fault he kind of just like believed her yeah and didn't ask any questions didn't really ask like, any okay. questions and stuff but now he's like trying to like make up for it and it's like really much in her life but bro their therapy bills must be insane so she went to jail for 10 years and she just got released okay this like, was the whole big thing yes. right i remember seeing as she got out of jail like so she's like probably like years, in her days late ago. 30s she's 32 oh my god so her life's just starting see that's yeah and so she's 32 the weird part the icky part is like she already also got married while she was in jail oh i feel like that's so common man Ugh. people like have weird fetishes for like criminals like i swear to god but also not even criminals this girl's so famous now she literally has like six million followers on instagram she posted no a way. tiktok what is her and Insta? got like gypsy rose blanchard she literally got she posted an instagram or a tiktok and got like 10 million likes in like two hours like she is gonna make so much money and she's already written a book already has a, a, she already has like um another book deal and another docu-series coming out so i don't know this guy whoever he is was probably like this girl's gonna make so much money when she's out of jail like true you he know saw, like some yeah. potential there she yeah i don't know she yeah interesting interesting person here yeah very very interesting oh it's and so the, weird so weird and the thing is too like so the mom lied about how old she was because she kept like faking her like birth certificate and so gypsy didn't even know how old she was like she kept lying and being like oh you just turned 12 even though she was like 17 oh you just this is your 14th birthday and then a couple times social services actually came to her house because there was like a few people that were like we don't know what's going on in this house and she would like drug her up so that when she the social like, services person was talking to her she would sound like she was like mentally not unwell like, unwell <gasps> So does she now currently have any actual like ailments or illnesses or is she just like now considered like a normal functioning she human? She probably has like maybe some stuff based on like, like the medications just, yeah. that they gave her and stuff. But I'm sure she, she's like healthy. You know like, what I can mean? Can she go get a job if she needed to? Like probably. can she just go and work? Wow. Probably. Like, oh my God, this is honestly, insane. There's so much more to the story. Like I've only covered, I would want to say like 20%. Really? It talks about like the backstory of the mom and like gets into the nitty gritty of how she was able to pull this off. Is this like, like several episodes? No, it's just doc- one long, one long documentary. Long oh it's God. so good. It's so, so good. Go watch it. I need um, to watch it. Yeah. But like, it's just like, I was so fascinated by this story because I was just like, how was she able to convince all these doctors to... Yeah, what state did they live in? Given... um so they were in the ozarks which ozarks i think the ozarks i think that's where they were and also were then like any of these doctors who just like signed off on this shit were they held like responsible at all for any of no, this no no and that's what's crazy there was one doctor who actually flagged this and said i think like she's lying blah 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 and they interviewed him the doc being like 
why didn't you do anything else? But he was like, what was I supposed to say? She was the poster child of like cancer and like all this True. stuff. And, and you're so, just going to be like, she's a fake. She's a she's, phony. She's a phony. <laughs> and like all these medical doctors would be like, you're calling me. You know what I mean? That's so a really, yeah, that's a really so he tough wrote situation. it in his notes and he sent it to, but he, anyway, and then when she found out, she found out this doctor wrote that about them. They like would change doctors, you know? So it was really easy for her to just like yeah. change who she was Back seeing. Back when you could just easily change doctors, that could never happen now. Honestly, I was thinking about this too. I'm like, now this would never happen because like there's so much like electronic medical records. Yes, everything's electronic now. Uh, Everything's electronic. Whereas back then in like 2005 and stuff when- You like, had- you had like actual physical file. I remember you go to the doctor, they pull out a real file and they're just like, okay. Yeah. So that's the yeah. reason she was able to falsify a lot of this stuff. So anyway, it's crazy guys. Like I was like so obsessed with it. I was watching like every little like snippet and things about it. Cause I was just so fascinated by this story. Like how could this happen? Like this is insane. <laughs> I need to watch this. So crazy. So crazy. That's going to be my first doc of the year. Yeah, definitely watch that. What's this poisoned movie show? Oh my gosh. Okay. This was another doc that Matt and I watched. Um, I don't have a bunch of notes on it, but it's called Poison the Dirty Truth About Your Food. And it just talks about like how we don't really know like all the shit that's in all this, like all the meat and even all the like vegetables and produce that we buy and how... Like you really have to like wash your shit. You have to be careful for contamination because it, there's a really high chance there could have like salmonella or like a bunch of e. other coli. things. E. coli. Because a lot of like farms in America that are like farming fr- vegetables or fruits, like they're really close to like a cattle spot. So like all of like the shit that's like going yes. into the water yep. and like going down to the river is then going into the water supply that's like spraying onto your like produce that you think is like fresh and safe but like really it's not and there was a big like there was a lot of incidents in america where a lot of people were dying from like e coli and salmonella because all these like farms like even like for like chickens and like like the eggs that you're eating like you just have to really wash them wash that shit like be careful like if you can like it really like makes me want to like like outsource better like i just don't i don't want to go to like walmart and buy like no. my eggs anymore like i want to like go to like a farm like a local farm and i want to know like where it's coming from and like what's happening because you just like don't know you don't know and it's important to also like look at where your food is coming from like yes. if you can buy something that's at least from canada like try your best i know it's hard especially in the winter but like in the summer we try our best to like actually go to like farmers markets and stuff to get our produce because at least you're like this exactly. is literally coming from next yes, door. Exactly. And I can see where it's coming from. Whereas like, yeah, Walmart, like all these random grocery stores who are bringing these places from all the states you would think has like all these regulations, but it's really state dependent. So each yeah. state has different regulations of what's happening. And so, yeah, wash your food, wash yeah. your green food. And honestly, a lot of the companies like they're not even like going to be fully responsible. Like if something no. were to go wrong, like they're so protective and it's just about them like changing like the laws and like trying to like mitigate this, like all this danger that can happen, like from what you're eating. And the craziest part too is like after man, I watched this movie a few weeks ago, we got like this news, um, this news article popped up on one of our feeds saying how like in Ontario, like six people have recently died from salmonella. That's insane. It's just like, what? It's frick? not as uncommon as you think. It's not. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. Like, yes, yeah, like I would wash my fruits and veggies and like I would cook my meat and this and that. But like sometimes I wouldn't like, I wouldn't always like check if my meat, like now we have like a thermometer. We like check all of our meat, like not because of this doc, but like more recently. But like, I don't know. And I was like in my like early 20s and I was like cooking for myself. I'm like, I wasn't checking if my cook, my, my checking if my chicken was fully, was, like, fully cooked. cooked. Yeah. Like I didn't really like do that until like my like mid to late 20s. And yes. I'm like, damn, I was so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> or like even like a lot of, le- I know lettuce is a big um, transporter of like come on, like salmonella and bacteria and also like cantaloupe like which is so Dude, random. cantaloupe is the worst thing Dude, like, you should heard, not eat cantaloupe like, i've heard like cantaloupe like who cantaloupe told me, he told me that she's like cantaloupe don't eat cantaloupe is, <laughs> yeah cantaloupe is super dangerous romaine can romaine be really lettuce, dangerous romaine like, lettuce or like any kind of like mixed lettuce because then you're kind of getting a mix of everything but man like literally thousands of people die a year from foodborne pathogens which is insane Insane. and yeah these like experts like on the in the dock or like yeah like we definitely don't eat cantaloupe we'll 
maybe sometimes have romaine because you just like oh, you don't really know i'm like oh my god like <laughs> i love romaine but what am i supposed to use in my salads like i know just kale like oh <laughs> i don't know oh my god that's but insane. it is pretty interesting i would recommend watching it yeah and yeah wash your food guys <laughs> love it okay let's actually jump into um some red flags because we have a few different ones that we yes want. <laughs> we want to get off our chest oh my god let's get some stuff off our <laughs> chest okay minus is speaking of food i think it's a red flag if let's say you have a meal and you have mashed potatoes your carrots and like meat and salad i think it's a red flag if you eat everything like one, like first you eat your mashed potatoes and then you eat your salad like if you don't if you're not like taking a little bit of everything not at once but like have a bite of mashed potatoes or then have like your turkey like, yeah that is weird that's so weird to me or like even if you just get fast food and you have a burger and french fries and you eat all your fries first that's psychotic i think that's so weird no that is weird that's a red also, flag people to me. who just like are like my food can't touch like they're like five years old like, i think Stop. i'm the opposite i'm like mush it around like turkey <laughs> dinner i'm like up. i'm just like <laughs> put mush it all together i love that <laughs> and then also i think it's a red flag if you eat your entire meal without taking one sip of your beverage and then you just drink your beverage at the end yes oh, God, like if you these can people? if you can eat a full meal and not have a sip of water i don't trust you no no what's going on you're uh, a robot we're just such water people though i feel like there's water people and then there's like not water people oh my god we'd be like i haven't drank water in like nine hours i'm like what do you mean what do you mean i literally have a water bottle right here i always water break <laughs> i'm always drinking water have you been seeing that these stanley cups are going for like 700 dollars? yo if this one is 700 dollars, i'm sorry leva but i might have to sell it because that's <laughs> crazy Facebook marketplace yeah session. yeah some of them are out of control like i thought they were like 60 bucks there's like some limited edition like Barbie ones or something that are going for like seven hundred and fifty dollars. That's which is insane. Like, that's a trip to Cuba. <laughs> what? Oh my god! No. I, I could never. That's a red flag. If you're buying a seven hundred fifty dollar Stanley Cup. That is an immediate red flag. Okay, this is good because people are probably traveling a lot uh, right now or have like in the past couple of weekends, but having a messy suitcase when you arrive at your destination, like if you get <gasps> somewhere and it's already all messed up, like no. what did you do? Did you oh my gosh it? you need packing cubes you need like your sheen bags yes. you need like everything in order on the way back on the way back sorry yeah I'm on the way back like, just we're just trying it. to survive yeah we're just trying to make it out alive but on, on the, way, the back. way there like you just got here and it's already a mess. chaotic like it's already chaotic no no that's not for me no absolutely not I can't do it also speaking of christmas time if you are wrapping your gifts christmas morning <laughs> like my future husband <laughs> at least he Red remembered flag. gifts <laughs> okay there's okay there's two types of people there's gift wrapping people and there's gift bag people okay i'm a gift bag person i can't stand gift wrapping oh. i just can't be bothered I I'm love not, gift wrapping. I'm not one to like match my decor and my like make sure all of them match and like that's extra I'm just you're getting a gift bag and I'm probably gonna <laughs> reuse it and if you don't leave, if you leave it at my house I'm gonna put it back in my like pile of gift bags and give it to somebody else like I just <laughs> can't be bothered it's so funny like every time like I every time I give a gift bag I don't remember the last time I bought a gift bag because I always save them yeah, which is amazing but then I'm like I wonder like where this gift bag has been and like where it's gonna go oh my God, that would <laughs> the be traveling so gift cool. bags like I swear to God one time I literally gave I think it was I gave Anita or someone I remember it was like this really like prominent it was like these big lips were on it like someone's mouth it was like a really sexy looking like gift bag and someone like gave it to me and then I gave it to someone and then somehow it made its way back to me and I was like oh my god this is insane like it literally made its way back oh my god <laughs> okay that's so random but that like remembered I just remembered a story that I heard on a podcast the other day that I have to tell you because it was freaking insane it was just like talking about like coincidences and like the universe just like having these weird coincidences yes. sometimes that happen and you're like what is going on so Brooke Schofield, Schof Schof I don't know how to say her last name but she's okay. like she's an influencer she has a podcast as well she was talking about how when she was a kid, her mom had these like butterfly like statues that were really like special and they were like super unique, like one of a kind. And they were like having a garage sale one day and her grandma accidentally put some of those statues on sale and someone bought them and her mom oh, got like super upset about it, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward like 10 years, 
Um, her mom is like, I don't know, out of the picture. Like, I think she was like a drug addict or something. They end up going into foster care. Oh, wow. Her, her sister and, um, her, and her foster parent takes them in and she, they're having dinner like the first night they get there and they're looking at like their little like display and they have these (gasps) butterfly statues on their display. And they were like, so like, so you one of a kind, like nobody had them and they're, they're like, where did you get these? Like, and she goes, Oh, like 10 years ago in a garage sale, we found these Stop. butterflies. And so she, that her foster mom ends up buying the freaking statues that her mom accidentally sold or grandma sold. Oh, and then they're at her house now. That's like insane. 10 years later. Isn't that freaking crazy? Like I love stories I like love that. I love stories like that. Like that's, that's like, that's not just a crazy coincidence. That's universal. Like that's at the universe. Like, yes. I don't know. I just believe in some things that's like, like that. That's like serendipity to the yes. extreme. That is Oh my god, I love that. That's so that is so eh? special. I was like, I, I need to tell you that story. That was just like reminded me of that of like the gift bag, just like making its way back to you. And yes, like, that is god. crazy. Oh, yeah. that, they're meant to be together. They're, yeah, exactly. But it's just so beautiful. Um, okay, <laughs> speaking of being meant to be together. The other day we found out that Tash eats minute rice <laughs> and I had to call her out on the pod because I wouldn't be a good friend if I didn't. Oh um, my god! We I don't know how this came about. Okay. It was because I, I was after recording one day, you guys, Farzad was like getting out some like leftovers. Like you made like some amazing curry and you had like your rice cooker out. And I'm like, oh my God, your rice looks so good. Like it looks way better than my <laughs> rice. So like, what rice do you use? Where is this from? <laughs> We're like basmati rice. We like pull out the like bag. It's like, has this rope? rope. It's like a rope, you know, like it's immigrants like, know. It's like Indian. It's like, like you're like only like an from in- India. We only have only rice from India. From India. Like, and I was like, oh, okay. And you're like, and then what I'm- rice do you use? I was like, I think it's like minute rice. <laughs> <laughs> they literally just like stared at me. It was like silence for like 10 seconds. I was like, mm. I was like, I didn't know that was actually a thing. Like I didn't even understand. Like I didn't know people use that. I always just saw it at the grocery store and I'm like, it's like, is it, do you put it in the microwave? Like I don't even know. How I, well, I put it in my rice cooker, but then I was also like, wait, that's probably not what you're supposed to do. If it's a minute rice, why am I putting it in my rice cooker for like 15 minutes? minutes? It takes longer. <laughs> I don't know. I just was like minute rice. But then I literally the next day I went to the grocery store and I bought the bag of rice. And it's so much better. Right? I actually haven't even ever had a chance to cook. I literally have just been eating leftover turkey for like two years. But I'm going to use it soon. And I know it's going to be way better. Oh and I literally God. like sent her a picture of me throwing out the minute rice. I was like, fuck this shit. Like... I felt so white in that moment. I was like, like, oh my God, I'm so fucking white. <laughs> oh my God, I loved it though. It was just so funny. It was just like some things you do that you don't think about doing like that and other things that probably yeah. you'll come to my house or I'll go to your house and you'll be like, what? Like, yeah, just don't even no, think about it. Thank you for that. Because uh, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> no, it's oh my not. God. I bet people listening to the pod right now are probably like, Frig. Throw it out. To make minute rice in the freaking rice cooker. Throw like, it out, guys. Mean? Throw your minute rice. Oh my god. Okay, let's jump into some health and well. Yes. Um, because I want to do. I've been seeing a lot of people posting it and inspired me. They've been posting like their ins for 2024 and their outs. Yeah. So let's like talk about some things we want to like bring in, and then some things we kind of want to like bring out and like leave into yes. the previous year. Okay. Okay. You go first, because you. Okay, I'll start. Yeah. So uh, for me, a big one is going to be home workouts because I'm leaving the gym workouts back in 2023. My gym membership expired. We've been buying all like the equipment to have in our basement and I'm just living for that right now. I'm living yeah. for the home workouts and I don't want to don't want to spend money going to the gym. Ugh, honestly, home workouts like, are the best thing ever. Yes. I love it. Oh, your setup is insane right no, now. No, I um we just got that treadmill, so my in for 2024 will definitely be to get my my cardio up and yes. to get my running up um I, right now I've just been doing like an incline walk and just like some light jog but not like long jogging but just kind of like incline walk jog incline walk jog yeah. the incline walk actually is like gets your heart Kay, racing like, you know like that 12. tiktok trend that was like the 30 whatever like the way like your incline the amount of time and the distance you're supposed to do do okay. you know what that whole thing is no. it's supposed to be a really good workout oh my god i forget what it is oh, i'll yeah, send you, you send it's like me. the 33 30 or something i forget okay. it, but i'll send it to you yeah because honestly like walking on an incline like it's so you could feel it in your, your legs butt 
yeah, so you're you, fine. Yeah, you really feel oh it. Oh my god! So when that's I, definitely gonna be when I used to go to the gym. I used to use the treadmill and I would put it on like the absolute, absolute highest. highest. You're basically like 12. walking upstairs. Yeah. yeah, and then it just it burns so a good. lot. So good. So good. Okay, another thing I'm bringing in is experiences over things. <gasps> Love. So I want to spend money more on experiences like going out doing something also i want to bring in like live music more like i feel like i don't go to enough like different like shows or like artists that i really like like i want to like commit more to even going to like montreal to see someone or toronto because no one comes to ottawa but i just miss going and going to see live music i love that Mm -hmm. okay that reminds me i didn't write this down but my in is definitely going to be um eating out less like going out to dinner less and having more dinner parties because yes. dinner parties are fun honestly with the prices that they're charging for like dinner nowadays when you go out to a nice dinner i'd rather spend that money and host people yeah. at my house have a nice dinner yeah and we circulate and we can have like as much wine as we want and it's not so expensive yes oh my gosh it's so, so true so and you can better. even do like like you would like make like the main portion and then like people can bring like the sides right. so then it's less pressure, pressure. Off of you too yes I love that. Yeah. I also put in terms of food, like ends for me is like vegetable market, like farmer's market, because even in the wintertime at Lansdowne in the Aberdeen Pavilion, they still do a farmer's market. No way. Yeah. I didn't know about that. So that's coming in for me this year. I love it. Something that I want to take out is like procrastination because I feel like a lot of the time I'm like, oh, I'll just do it tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and I'm like scrambling and I'm like, why didn't I just do this yesterday instead of like rushing to finish this little task now? Yeah. So it's like, stop pushing it off till tomorrow like my future self will be so much happier if i just do it now so we're out with procrastinating love it love it and out for me is definitely going to be buying things just for the trends and not buying things that are going to add to like my staple closet so like i'm finding a lot of the time especially for like a lot of events and things i'm like buying random knickknacks that i'll literally never wear again same so now i'm going to be really mindful if i'm buying something is it going to go into my like staple closet is it like a staple or is it just something that i'm buying for a trend or for an event honestly that is such a good idea and even if it's a bit more expensive to buy that staple like time capsule like item it's gonna be better than spending all this like money on these like random Random little knickknacks here and there it's like actually something that you will wear that is timeless i love that um speaking of clothing and out for me is jeans that are not comfy like the jeans that we wear that are standing jeans and then you sit down and you're like so uncomfortable that sometimes I'm literally like unbuttoning my pants I'm like no like I found these jeans from Abercrombie and Fitch that are like the curve love one that are like looser on your thigh and it's just a game changer honestly yeah because you think you think you're gonna wear those uncomfy outfits but then when you have a comfy choice, yes. you never go for the uncomfy. That is so, so true. Yeah, it's it's honestly so true. Um, mine's also another one for me is gonna be like mindless eating. Mm. I find sometimes when I'm watching TV, like you you can just be eating something and not really even recognize how much you're eating because you're just like so like you're watching yeah. this TV show and you're like because you don't chips. know that you're full because your brain is being so stimulated by yes. the TV show you're watching so you're not actually getting those messages to your brain that like hey bitch like you're kind of full like stop yeah. eating those crackers and cheese yeah and if you were <laughs> if me and you let's say we're just having a conversation and I'm eating I probably would have stopped already but it's because I'm like so yeah. like in my TV show and I'm like oh my god oh my god so okay this makes me think of one too I want to take in this year like just eating slower <gasps> I feel like I'm a fast eater and I need to like I want to start the habit where like take the bite and like put the fork down and like chew and swallow and like see what's going on instead of like (laughs) always like having the fork ready to go. Like I'm a fast because I'm just like go, go, go. Sometimes sometimes I'm like, I'm just going to eat fast. It's like, no. I literally did that right before you came. I'm such a fast (laughs) eater. Like Farza will take three times as long to eat the same thing. Like it could be the same exact portion and he'll, it'll take him three times as long. And I'm like, I finished like 20 minutes ago. Like, hurry up. <laughs> I'm on for, ready for dessert. Yeah, like, let's, let's go. go. <laughs> I'm already done my dessert. Like you're still <laughs> eating. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that's a really good one. Okay. Another in for me is free journaling. So instead of doing okay. my usual like five minute guided journal which I do love and I think that's what I needed the last like two or three years I needed that like guidance I actually went out and bought um 
a really nice journal. I've, it's, I don't want to butcher the name. It's just like German company. It starts with an L and not Moleskin, but the other one. Okay. And I bought like the dotted one. So like I can use the dots to like write straight if I want to, but then I can also just be like more free and open with it. So I want my journal to be like what I need at the time. So if I need to write down my gratitudes or if I want to write down a to-do list, if I want to just write down my day or like I'm keeping tracks of the books I want to read in 2023 or like my accomplishments if I want to write those things down to like look back on I just want to have more like creative freedom with my journaling instead of just being like what am I grateful for like what are my affirmations it was like getting boring and and I do find it's kind of repetitive like what am I grateful for and it's kind of like okay I've already said these things but I'm finding new ways to say the same thing yeah you know so are you doing one entry a day type of thing honestly like yesterday I spent like two hours just like writing like Uh I wrote over like just like I've been feeling lately like how the year ended like what I want to look forward to I wrote down like a big list of like gratitudes I had like over the past year I love that. and then I like started doodling and wrote down like my books of 2024 and I'm gonna write down all the books that I want to read which is another thing I'm taking in I do this every year but I really want to stick with it is just like taking in like reading before bed oh I literally wrote that reading before bed yes <laughs> like good bed. books good books good, good books. books and we'll talk about them on the pod yes more. yes but also like a mix of fiction and nonfiction. because sometimes I find I'm either in a rut of of only nonfiction or mm-hmm. only fiction. And we just talked about this too. Like I'm more of a nonfiction um, or fiction before bed. Yes. Nonfiction in the morning. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Yes. I've been reading actually. So the I've been reading this book for like a while now, but I just like got really back into it over the Christmas break. But I recommend Silent The Silent Patient. Okay, I started it and then I kind of got bored and stopped oh, reading it. Is it okay, good? Okay, I guess you should keep reading okay, it. Okay, I started the It Girl and I'm like re- I'm like thirty percent into it and it's Okay. It's very slow, but it need a recommended. I'll give it, it I'll okay. give you this book when I'm done. I'm okay. really gonna finish it in the next couple of days um i would stick with it it gets yeah. it gets really good and i think it's only gonna get even better yeah and then another out for me too is yeah i can just like screens before bed because i want to replace that with my reading like i'm pretty good with no screens before bed but i've been finding lately i don't know i've just been doing a little bit of the like doom scrolling and i just want to put my phone charged like out of reach yes put it yeah. away so like i can get, have to get up to set, turn my alarm off you know like yeah. i don't want to just be like able to grab it and i find too like what's been helping me sometimes is just also taking off my watch because i find with me i don't know if this is just a me thing but like if i see a notification sometimes i'm like oh i need to like answer that or i need to like look at that or like whatever and sometimes before bed you're just like i just want to have like my time and i don't need to worry about like if people are messaging or whatever because yes. everyone has different bedtimes also like i might yeah. be in bed at like 9 p.m but like that doesn't mean other people are in bed and people might yeah. be having conversations it's in a group true. chat or whatever yeah you and know? then sometimes i feel bad it's like if i know i've seen it i feel like oh my god i, I have to respond, respond to it no. so you don't have like that guilt so it's just like just dnd that shit yeah i don't want any of that yeah 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 i'm trying to think if i have any other ones that um say. I, my another end for me is going to be asking for help when i need help because <gasps> oh. i'm really bad at like accepting help so I'm yeah trying to be better. i'm here to help you if yeah, you ever need any you. help with anything thank you <laughs> oh and then me i wrote tea because i love coffee oh i think i'm gonna be like spill some tea no <laughs> <laughs> i want to gossip more no <laughs> tea if it's funny i want to have more tea actual physical tea yeah um i just feel like that's just something nice to do before bed i just have a cup of tea and read my book and just be a wholesome bitch. I love it. Yeah. I think that's going to be our vibe for tw- uh, for January at least. Yeah. <laughs> for, for our vibe for 2024. Our vibe for January. Just like very wholesome. We're definitely yeah. going to do health and well. I'm trying to do dry Jan. I don't know yeah. if you are. I'm just like. like I, I'm not. I don't know yet. Because we're yeah. going to be at price skiing a lot. I just don't. Yes. I don't think I'm going to be. I'm not going to like be like drinking to excess. Yes. Like we were in the last couple of days. You don't need to like put a label on it too. Yeah. You know, you could just be like drinking less. Yeah, that's exactly. Like, I feel like, like that's fine. If, I'm, if I just skied all day and I want to have a Corona, I'm going to have a Corona. Exactly. But I'm going to have one. I'm not going to have like nine. Yes. I could never do that anyway because yes. I'd be so bloated. Yeah. But yeah, a yeah. somewhat a damp January. Yeah. <laughs> Love, it. Love it. Okay, guys, we want to know your in and outs too. So like. Send us all a little message. Send if there's us any. what you're like doing this year. If you yeah, want us to, like, what talk you're excited about, about, or if you guys want any like guests on that you're thinking that you're like, oh, this would be a great guest. Send yes. them to us. Because... Some guests for the new year. We would love that. Yeah. Okay, this was so fun. I'm Ugh. so excited for what this year has in store for the pod. Yes. If you've been listening since last year, thank you so much. We love your support. It we means everything you. to us. We love you so much, guys. Thanks for listening. See you next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye.